What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another preview slash prediction video. And today we are here for Lions Ravens. It's four and two versus five and one. It's the game of the week. So let's get it started. Welcome everybody to the video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we are back with another preview slash prediction video. Still in the quest to get a prediction score right. I mean, at this point, I've kind of given up on it. Like, yeah, we'll just see what happens. But this was a really difficult one, I think, to prepare for. Why? Because the Baltimore Ravens offense is so dynamic and they've had some changes. They play things a little bit differently offensively. But that run game is where it all always starts to me. And I understand it's way less design runs this season for Lamar Jackson. A lot of his yards has come through scrambles situations which is something that you have to deal with with this team but it's just still such a dynamic offense that they have with all the movement the pulling offensive linemen Lamar Jackson can take off the running backs they just had always seem to have good backs that they can just mix in there this was a difficult one but it's now that time to do the video. So we'll start with the injury report first, the bad news first. David Montgomery is going to be out for this game. The real question now is whether or not he goes on IR. And by the time you're seeing this video, you may know if he's on IR or not. Hopefully not because that's four weeks, but we'll see on that one. But he's going to miss this week. We expected him to miss some time. The initial report was that. And then also Jonah Jackson is out for this game. Now we don't know who's exactly going to start in his place. Last week it was KO'd and it seems like that could be the case once again. Dan Campbell didn't go as far as to say that that Big V would start this week and if he did that could still mean Graham Glasgow kicks to left guard and Big V just plugs in at right guard so we'll keep an eye on that last week I thought KO did fine you know everybody had some missed blocks run blocking in pass protection I thought that's where you saw the most inconsistency and to be honest this week against Baltimore while they don't have any huge names on that defensive line maybe outside of Michael Pierce you have to keep an eye on a guy like Justin Matabike in the interior and they have a really good rotation I would assume KO gets to start once again but we'll see on that one because we don't know for sure as of now the players that are questionable for this game first off Craig Reynolds who would be set to be our number two back Jameer Gibbs is back this week that's the big news you probably heard it by now but he is going to play and it sounds like he's going to take a load of the workload for the Lions in this game the biggest question there will be more so pass protection than anything and that's where having a guy like Craig Reynolds could be very beneficial because then you could line him like a receiver or go two back looks and Craig Reynolds could stand in and pass protect if that's what the Lions wanted to do because against this team they love to bring pressure specifically from defensive backs to slot position they don't blitz a ton but when they do they can hide it from the slot position so having that back that can stand in and pick up a pass pro could be very beneficial this week Reynolds is questionable he's been limited participation now the Lions would have to go to the practice squad if he's not fully ready to go and even if he is someone's going to be elevated last week we saw Davino Zigbo was elevated he had a carry and then also Muhammad Ibrahim was added back to the practice squad from preseason an undrafted free agent the Lions picked up out of Minnesota he had a pretty rough injury during preseason tried to fight his way back out there but that is a pure between the guards type of runner we saw it on tra in training camp when we lined up against a different team and you also saw it on the preseason so one of those guys maybe both of them are elevated for this game but Craig Reynolds is questionable so he'll be someone to keep an eye on and then finally Josh Paschal the defensive end still technically on IR he's within that 21 day clock but it's expected that he is going to play and according to Josh Paschal he's full go he's ready to play so it sounds like he's gonna be back out there and he's gonna be elevated this week which could actually be an extremely valuable position in this game of course we have John Kaminsky which can play that role but in this game when you talk about the tackles and the tight ends where they'll put Patrick Ricard on the line of scrimmage a big body tight end that can really kind of pin down blocks seal down on the line of scrimmage those guys become very key against this team offensively so having Josh Pascal just for depth could be huge I think it's been up and down for John Kaminsky but one thing we know he can do is get pressure Pascal just adds more depth to that mix and then also James Mitchell is questionable as well, the tight end. Sounds like he's going to be back this week to be tight end three for the Lions behind Brock Wright and Sam Laporta. Now the players that are set to play with no injury designation, Teddy Bridgewater, the back of quarterback, he's dealing with a knee. Jameer Gibbs, as we touched on, Sam Laporta, who had, was dealing through the calf injury last week but did play. He had some wins and some losses against Levante David. Well, I would expect that he's going to see some Kyle Hamilton this week. He's moved back more to the safety role, and because of that, it could free him up to get some work against Sam Laporta in this game Frank Ragnow and then also Brian Branch they have a lot of different guys that they'll put into the slot but a guy like Zay Flowers will align there a ton he has a lot of quickness I think he's really difficult at the top of the route so having a guy like Brian Branch back would be huge for that also when they go heavy personnel which could be a real strategy for them in this game to do that if they go to that heavy personnel offensively the run support from a guy like Brian Branch the flexibility that he gives us to only put one other true safety on the field like a Kirby Joseph or a Tracy Walker and then leave Brian Branch out 
out there because he can play in the box he can roll back to a safety alignment and his run support is going to be crucial in this game because he's going to be in the slot a lot so I think Brian Branch this week is massive just for matchups it is that time of the year the Detroit Lions are five and one the NBA season is right around the corner and sporting events are happening and I know we've all done this at least once we sat back and said to ourselves maybe I should get some tickets to a Detroit Lions game. Had a frustrating experience when looking for tickets. Maybe you didn't know what the views were going to look like from that seat, so you didn't trust it. Or maybe when you clicked on it and you thought you were getting run price, all these hidden fees pop up and you're like, hold up, this is a lot more than I expected. Or you just don't see any good deals that incentivize you. You shouldn't have to worry when buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With Kill last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their best price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets what i love about game time is number one it'll search based on my location so immediately i'm getting results based on where i live so i'm seeing different sporting events near me number two i love the deals that they give you whether that be the flash deals or the zone deals i got tickets to this last carolina panthers game at home and guess what i did it with game time and what's so great about the process is it's very good communication when i got the tickets i immediately got an email letting me know what i should expect to have my tickets it's ready plus on top of that the views from your seat is absolute money i love being able to see where i'm sitting from because for me i've sat in a lot of different places in ford field when they show you that view oh you can see everything that you're going to see when you get there in time is the only ticketing app that gives you peace of mind with your purchase also love is the all-in pricing option which basically puts the total out there so you know right away if you're getting a great deal that way when you click on it you don't go to buy the ticket and then all of a sudden all these hidden fees pop up and you're like wait a minute where did that come from from. I didn't know it was going to cost this much. You get to see that right up front. You can buy your tickets within two taps. It's such an easy setup process. And then the next time you go in, it can be even easier. Get the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code DOS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. But again, create an account and redeem code DOS. D O S E, code DOS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest priced guaranteed now two players have just been added to the injury report today first off and this one's very concerning jerry jacobs with a knee injury i don't know what's going on here with this one but he is now listed as questionable he was recovering from a torn acl from this past season he's played up to this point this year as our starting cornerback but this would be a very tough loss if the lions don't have jerry jacobs this week again i don't think this is an elite receiving core and i do think that's an area where i look on both sides of the ball it's gonna be one of my keys for this game is saying that we have to win on the perimeter but not having jacobs would be massive in this game because while maybe they don't have an elite receiving core they do have guys that can run Rashad Bateman has a real ability to build up speed some of the play action shot plays even though he hasn't consistently come down with the ball he has that aspect to his game of course Odell Beckham is always a threat especially within the red zone they like to try to give him shot plays they love him out of the slot and then of course you have a guy that does play in the slot a lot in Zay Flowers who's so quick at the top of his route he is difficult to deal with as well so they have a lot of different pieces that mix into that role and also Marvin Jones Jr is listed as out he will not travel with the team due to personal reasons now the good thing is the Lions are healthy outside of that and they do have Antoine Green to be receiver five as the backup and Jamison Williams is back so that's the good thing we're healthy there I do say later in this video that I expect to get a back shoulder attempt to Marvin Jones Jr in this game but he's not going to travel with the team so scratch that that's not going to happen maybe we do do a back shoulder attempt but it's not to Marvin Jones Jr maybe it's to Josh Reynolds if anything it's probably more so just attacking with Josh Reynolds rather than the pure back shoulder pass but I just want to throw that in there hopefully everything is okay with marvin jones jr i don't know what this would be for personal reasons but i'm just hoping everything's all right with him of course with jacobs if he couldn't go for whatever reason or if he was limited we do have stephen gilmore the rookie the undrafted free agent the lions kept around plus they have khalil dorsey who returned last week played a little bit on special teams khalil dorsey is back and he gives us outside corner flexibility he'd probably be the next man up i would assume but also with having brian branch back it could give the Lions some outside flexibility with will harris especially if they lean into more of a zone cover coverage world and that could be very possible for this week so again lines are going to have options there if Jacobs can't go but we'd 
love to have him on the field. Now, when you look at the Ravens side of things, we'll hit on some of the key injuries that we know so far. Marcus Williams, the safety, is out for this game, dealing with a hamstring. That's a big one as well, because when you just watch Marcus Williams, he's all over the football. He was also with the Saints, so they have a lot of familiarity with how good that player is in the back end. He's just a straight playmaker, but Geno Stone is their backup, and man, Geno Stone is not bad either. Geno Stone had an interception against the Tennessee Titans in a cover three look, so they are fine at safety, but Marcus Williams is kind of a different breed type of, I think, playmaker in the back end, and then guys with no injury designation, Jadavian Clowney, who has been a huge addition for them without Owe at times early this season. They've had some veterans kind of step in. Jadavian Clowney's ability to get pressure has been massive for this team. Owe is also with no injury designation, Odafe Owe, so that's another massive get back for this team to really get healthy at that spot. I think more so for run defense than anything, just because when you watch them, you felt like at times you could attack them with Kyle Van Noy, who was out there. Now getting these two guys back for run defense and of course, pass rush as well. A guy like Ronald Darby who gives him some depth at that cornerback position. I think he's played pretty well when he's had to step in so far this season, but I'm not sure that he's going to be a starter in this game with Brandon Stevens and also Marlon Humphrey who's continuing to work himself back. If anything there, it's just about getting more snaps for Humphrey because last week maybe wasn't the best for him. He's probably going to start so will Stevens over Darby, I would assume, but we'll see. I think Darby's played pretty well and I think that could be a real option for him. So with that, let's dive into kind of the preview side of things. I'm going to do my best to get straight to the point, just point out some of the key things that I'm focused on both sides of the ball. That way this video isn't super long. So we'll start with the Ravens offensively and what the Lions need to look out for. Who are the key players to stopping this Ravens offense? As always, I love to start with the offensive line. And really from the center to the right side of the offense, fine center, right guard, right tackle. I think they're pretty strong. Zeitler with Linderbaum and then also Morgan Moses who... You know, usually Aiden Hutchinson aligns against right tackles, but Morgan Moses has actually been pretty good this season, so we'll see if they try to do that. However, on the left side of the offense line, I think there are more questions, specifically at the left guard position where they have John Simpson, and I think he's been the guy that you can consistently get pressure against, especially if you can utilize some stunt looks because you can get an edge on that player and you can usually stunt inside and crash inside of it. And then also Ronnie Stanley, who is a good tackle. He's not by any means like a, like an issue on their offensive line, but I do think you can get some wins there. Specifically, you can do his chest, win with some power, Power, which the Lions like to do with their defensive ends is win right through tackles. I think he's a guy that you could look at there as well. And of course, in the run game, core strength, there's been questions about that side of his game. And I think that's an area where occasionally the Lions could splash some success rushing the passer off the left side of this offensive line. When it comes to running the football, we know there's been less design runs for Lamar Jackson, though they've came up, especially with the reads that are tied a lot to the handoffs. And then also the aspect of him once again inside the red zone, they will do real design runs there or on like third and longs, they'll run draws for Lamar Jackson. But they do have a lot of different ways they can attack you on the ground. They can hit you with stretch runs, outside, wide zones. They can also mix in the inside zone game, which is where Lamar Jackson becomes a big-time threat. And then they love to pull offensive linemen. You get two pulls. You get sweeps. So they have a lot of variety within this offensive attack. And they tie it in with a lot of eye candy, specifically with jet motion looks from a slot, whether that's a, a Zay Flowers, whoever that may be, the tight end. They'll utilize that jet motion lead block like we do occasionally, but they'll also utilize it as eye candy and in the red zone, those guys become real threats, especially because the Lions play one of the heavier boxes in the NFL. You really have to watch for some of those jet handoffs. It seems to be the area where the Ravens like to utilize those, and I wouldn't be surprised if they try to use it in this game to get outside of a heavy box that the Lions will probably show pre-snap and make our defensive backs tackles, the safeties, and the slot corners, which is why I think Brian Branch is going to be a key in this game because that position's always in the mix to have to stop the run, and I think his ability to, first off, diagnose and get ahead of some of these runs, but Secondly, be such a reliable tackler, right? That's the key when you play Lamar Jackson is being reliable, not letting him make you miss, which he's so good at. I thought Brian Branch's biggest skill set coming out of college was his ability to tackle. I thought he was an elite tackler, so that's going to show up in this game, as well as I would throw Jack Campbell into that mix as well. Because of the role that he can play on the line of scrimmage, line up in the slot if you want to play him in that role. It's kind of like what we did back in 2021 when we played the Ravens. Yes, we're a little bit different now defensively, but when you have that Sam linebacker that can align in the slot or get down on the line of scrimmage and play on the edge, a guy like Jack Campbell also to me becomes crucial. One, because you have to maintain discipline because everything can be brought back outside. 
usually tries to kind of crash down on the defensive line, but he's someone that, and also the case of Jack Campbell, if he's in that position where he has Jamar, Lamar Jackson in space, that ability to make the tackle in space. He's another guy that you would see back in college, wouldn't overrun tackles very often, wouldn't overrun sacks. The body control showed up last week. Jack Campbell, two young guys, two rookies, I think show up as key players just because in moments they're going to be put in a spot where they're going to have to make a play. And I think both those guys have the skill sets to do so. Now, when you look at it from a defensive line spot with all the variety that they do, I always like to say, what am I focused on with the defensive line? To me this week, it's going to be who is that nose to tackle, whether that's the Isaiah Bugs, whether that's the Benito Jones, occasionally the Aleem McNeils, but I'm really focused on who that guy is and focused on a guy like Benito Jones. One, because the nose tackle off the backside, when they run away from you, especially with some of these outside runs, they have to show that explosiveness, that quickness to get a feel, be a disruptor. But then when they run towards the front side, you have to make sure that you're not getting crashed down by a down block or a double team initially, because if that is the case, it gives even more room for Lamar Jackson to pull the ball down and take off or hand it off to his running back. And it creates a lot more space for that edge defender to have to be responsible for, depending on their offensive package that they come out in. So for me, that nose tackle position, I'm circling in this game. I already talked about the left guard. I think you can have success there. They have a center in Linderbaum who's young, but he's he's a very good center. And Zeitler on the opposite side, occasionally I think you can get some wins there as well, specifically with quickness. To the off-ball linebacker position, it's kind of the same, same reason. Number one, screens. I know this falls more into the passing game, but this is a team that has seen a lot of man coverage this season. And if you are going to run man against them, they will set up a lot of running back screens. For 18% of their passes turn in the screens. They throw the most in the NFL. Linebackers are usually the guys that are put in the mix because if you're playing man coverage, they like to throw those screens to their running back. So there's that. And then there's also, again, the read option looks for Lamar Jackson. And that's really the biggest thing for me is just not having two guys fill the same gap. Alex Anzalone, Derek Barnes, Melk Rodriguez made some splash plays last time we played Carolina. Wasn't our best defensively, but that was another team that utilized the option run. I would circle on those off-ball linebackers just having the awareness of where is my defensive lineman and not filling the same gap. If he's crashing down on the back or he's crashing into the backfield, I have to spill out and make sure that I get on that quarterback. We can't both crash down and leave an open lane towards the outside. That's something that can't happen. So the linebackers more so just awareness and being fast to trigger when they see some of those looks. And then when you talk about the defensive ends, I'm really focused on, again, the Josh Pascals and the John Kaminsky's here. The ability to hold ground, not be slammed inside by a tight end, dealing with some of those double team blocks that they're going to give you from the tackle position if you're playing a four eye or a five technique or a four technique, your head up with a tight a tackle on the play. Those guys, I think, become crucial because of the outside runs. Then also, again, being able to maintain kind of that discipline towards the edge. You can't let things spill back around outside of you against this team. This offense is creative. You'll get the pulling offense linemen. You'll get the pin pull looks. Expect to see some real outside runs, especially on early downs against the Lions in this game. As I talked about, first and second down, Lions are one of the teams that play the most men in the box. So I would keep an eye on the Ravens to look. If they get that look, maybe try to get outside the numbers and put those guys in the mix, which really keys on the off-ball linebackers and a guy like Jack Campbell being on the edge to help us out make some plays. Aiden Hutchinson, understanding they do pass the ball more now. It's more of their, it's more of the central point of their offense than what it was in the past, but I still think the run game comes back as the focus for me personally. Now, moving on to pass defense, what do I think are the keys in this one? Well, when you look at their receiving core, they've obviously gotten some heat so far this season because of their drops, whether that's from Rashad Bateman or just miscommunication seemingly with receivers not being on the same page. There still seems to be real hit and miss results there when throwing to the receiver position. Odell Beckham Jr. hasn't consistently been on the field, and now he's back, but still not everything is always seemingly on time within this offense. And maybe some of that gets better with just getting the receivers more consistently within this offense. They're changing some things up for sure. But what I'm focused on in pass coverage, watch this offense in the passing game. It still seems to always start with one player. It's kind of like what we talked about with Adam Thielen and you look at the Carolina Panthers. To me, that's like Mark Andrews within this offense. Number one, a lot of times he's the go-to guy for Lamar Jackson on the play. And if he sees a man coverage look pre-snap, if a safety rolls down to go match up with Mark Andrews, that's usually the place that he's going to look to attack with the football. They love to put him in the slot. They'll line him up wide. They'll run crossing routes because of his ability at the top of the route to really read how the defender is going to play. I think that's what he does really well. He knows when to break off a route Mark Andrews does. Also, what he can do over the middle of the field. And even if he's not getting the football, it's their ability to create levels and get things happening underneath because you can push him vertically and he takes the attention. He'll pull a linebacker out of the play. That guy starts everything, I think, within this passing game, stopping Mark Andrews. Now, I've seen a lot of teams take different approaches to do that. You look at a team like the Titans, they like to play zone coverage. You saw the quarters looks that they threw out there defensively, which I thought for the most part actually worked pretty well because it allowed them to usually keep a safety over top. 
So if the linebacker wanted to push vertically, they wouldn't be pulled upfield. They would be able to pass it off immediately to their safety behind them and then drop underneath and take away some of the underneath passes. Even if that was a cover three look because they would roll their two safeties kind of down more to the sticks pre-snap before then dropping out into that cover three look defensively. So I thought it was an interesting approach. They gave up some easy things on the outside because of that, but I thought it was an interesting approach to really try to take away the middle of the field. So even if you play man coverage against this team, specifically on like a third down, robber looks are also something that a lot of teams like to do, bringing that safety down, taking away the middle of the field, not playing like a two-man look defensively against this team because it does start with taking away the middle of the field. Some coverage I would expect to see, especially if the Lions are going to lean a little bit man coverage because I don't dislike man coverage against this team. It really just comes down to what are you trying to give up and what do you not want to give up. If you're in a position where you're saying, hey, just let them take the underneath plays, but we want to really limit what they can get going with Andrews and getting down the field, I think the quarters looks, the cover six looks, the zone coverage makes sense. Now, zone depth is going to be crucial, whether that's playing underneath or playing like this, where you're that outside flat defender and you're trying to get depth. Because here you'll see Lamar Jackson, he's not afraid to throw this pass, even though it's tightly contested. And this is what he'll do. He'll even throw passes sometimes late, which can get him into trouble downfield. But he's going to push the ball based on what he thinks is opening up. However, if you're in a position where you really want to be a little bit more aggressive and I think really try to take away some of this, their options and make Lamar Jackson maybe take some sacks or try to take off and run, the man coverage isn't the worst option either. And I would expect to see the Lions utilize what we've seen a ton of in that number three receiver position, the slot or the tight end in this case, if it's like a two by two look, I would not be surprised to see an off ball linebacker pass it when it goes vertically to the safety position. That way they can sit down underneath and play some of those underneath routes that are set up off of that because again, they try to open up the middle of the field with a lot of those two-man concepts by reading through the tight end or whoever that player is that can push vertically and then coming back underneath. So having that safety over top allows them to dive. We saw that last time we played Baltimore two years ago. Them Lions kind of used the Lions kind of utilized that strategy. Now they were a much heavier man team then or much heavier zone now, but overall it comes back to stopping Mark Andrews. Would it shock me if Baltimore came into this game saying that their strategy was to utilize more heavy personnel, meaning more tight ends on the field like a Charlie Kohler and also getting a guy like Isaiah likely more into the mix that kind of bring you I think a little bit back to what Baltimore you think of them in the past but it wouldn't surprise me if they try to utilize a little bit more of the heavy personnel maybe less receiver usage because one that can play in a little bit more to a team strength and they could also be trying to pry the Lions away from what they they are really good at defensively which is playing with five defensive backs on the field statistically speaking they are the best defense and they have five defensive backs on the field in coverage doing that with Patrick Ricard yes that can should make the Lions again try to match with a little bit of a heavier person but he should not to me get the attention of we need a safety over top or a slot corner or a safety has to deal with that a linebacker is enough especially if it's a man coverage because Patrick Ricard doesn't run that kind of route tree you'll get a guy like likely who may push the field vertically or run some delayed routes so you have to keep an eye on him but it wouldn't surprise me if they try to utilize some of those heavier personnel looks to not only help themselves offensively because they've had some hit and miss results utilizing receivers this season but also taking us away from what we do really well defensively although if they do play that way then you start to look at who are those options that they have Zay Flowers is a guy that I circle first off just because of his ability as I said the quickness that he has at the top of the route if he's in the slot I do trust Brian Branch to handle that responsibility pretty well but more so he'll move around all the time and he'll give you a lot of different splits and a lot of different looks and those pieces will move around a lot Nelson Aglor is another guy I think specifically from the slot they love to take shots from the slot position slot fades they love to hit those so you have to keep an eye on a guy like Nelson Aglor when he gets those looks one on one to try to get over top and again having Brian Branch becomes crucial for this game it's such a big time piece to have back but then you also have again the Odell's and you have the Rashad Bateman's who've had the drops I think with them you just see inconsistency in terms of timing I think sometimes things just look kind of kind of awkward within the offense even if the ball's in a good spot it doesn't seem to always be within the flow of the play and the ball kind of comes out in a hurry and like immediately and there's just not consistency there now yes against the Steelers they just had a lot of drops there does seem to be off timing within this offense when they pass the ball you saw it against Tennessee Titans when they had the interception this was man coverage and he's throwing the ball before the receiver's even breaking he doesn't know where the ball is and it's picked off on the play for for the Lions in terms of coverage in this game first off mixing up looks with as we talked about kind of last week cornerback techniques I think specifically if you're playing man coverage mixing up cornerback techniques showing press and jumping into off coverage different looks like that I think can kind of maybe get Lamar Jackson to attack a read that maybe he thought was going to be the right one but then the cornerback drops out and they try to take a shot and you're in a position where where it's covered up because that's not really a good technique to attack against. So I would say roll some of those, give some mixed looks. Also with the safeties as well, I would expect the safeties to be rolling around post-snap, probably playing at a little bit more of an aggressive
defensive depth. Varingland does get a little aggressive in this game. It wouldn't shock me to try to see him potentially set up a little bit of a bait uh, for Lamar Jackson. You will see it when they blitz. He does a pretty nice job of finding the hot read if he sees the blitz coming, but you'll get hit and miss results usually if it comes from like a slot spot, which makes sense. One, if you keep playing the same type of coverage over and over, they're going to do a nice job of adjusting to it and finding beaters for that play. But number two, I think there's a real opportunity to potentially try to bait with maybe a rusher, have him attack that hot read, and try to drop someone into that spot and potentially get a play defensively. More what I've seen so far this year, of course, you always have to worry about his legs, but bringing pressure specifically if you keep it balanced, you can be in a position where you can keep in the pocket, kind of collapse the pocket on him. But what I've seen is that you can definitely bring pressure against him. However, if you show him where the pressure is coming from, he does a really nice job, one, at standing in the pocket, not taking off on the play. Does a really nice job standing in the pocket, delivering and taking the hit, trying to find where that blitz is coming from and throwing right back into the pressure. But if the Lions could hide some potential pressure looks, like from the slot position, kind of like they do defensively, that will come back to more so being able to get them in the obvious passing downs if you can get pressure looks from that kind of spot at times you can get hit and miss reads in terms of where to go with the football based on where the pressure is coming from i think in zone coverage you have to look at the linebackers and the slot cornerback one because they're going to try to do run fakes to pull you down on the play but then secondly the depth is going to be key he does a pretty solid job especially when he knows what coverage they're in like a cover three of understanding where to exploit against that defense so depth becomes a key for you defensively to make sure that you keep that depth number one from a slot position or from your linebackers making sure that you can play underneath and take away kind of the easy hitters that they try to set up when they get into the red zone but really this is something the Lions have had good practice with recently is having to deal with Lamar Jackson's ability to take off with his legs this is something that of course is going to be a key in this game because a lot of his yards do come from scrambling and it's two things it's number one pass rush lanes as we always talk about this team will put the most pressure on your pass rush lanes because the Lions don't play a spy so you have to keep an eye on that especially if they do roll into man coverage and they're trying to take away the crossing routes and pull a safety down in the play really going to have to be important for those four guys to make sure that they keep the quarterback within the pocket the best that they can and then secondly it's also receivers down the field being able to plaster when it becomes a broken play not being in a position where you're like losing track of who it is or also in zone coverage if he breaks the play plastering who's ever in your zone because otherwise again he does a nice job of keeping his eyes downfield when he takes off and you'll see a real willingness and want to push the ball down the field with his arm even if it's very late in the play and he'll reset himself way outside of schedule. So you have to keep an eye on who is on the field when a play breaks down in plastering those routes, not just sitting into a zone spot. Offense, their 18th at pass block win rate, which says that there is opportunity to have success there, especially with some stunt work again, as I said, on the left side. I think that's the place where you can really circle as an opportunity to attack this offensive line. Now, it can be a little bit difficult to get early down pass rush unless it's really coming from like an edge defender position because they like to move to pocket, zone play action sets, even out of the gun. Like here, Tennessee goes into a cover three look defensively, and you can see there's limited real routes that they can attack on this play, but the linebackers have to be able to find this underneath route because he'll attack those tight windows. The outside corner has to find this route hitting the sideline. He finds the check down and comes back to it, but he's well late, and really, this shuts down the play. It's not a bad offensive line as a whole. There's really not a terrible offensive lineman out there like a clear weak spot on this offensive line but I do think that's the big thing the left side is where you can have some real success rushing the passer in this game probably set up some stunts but it comes back to again being able to keep him within the pocket and the flip side of things when you talk about the Ravens defensively we'll start with their run defense because as I said they have a real strong rotation of just different bodies that they can throw out there with on the defensive line Michael Pierce Justin Matabike Washington those are some of the starters that you'll see consistently on the field and now getting some of their edge defender backs that's going to be key if you look at them statistically they're a top five run defense according to the PFF, uh, four yards per carry, which is 15th in the NFL, even though there's not a lot that separates that, and 97.7 yards per game, which is ninth in the NFL, fourth in expected points added with run defense. They are a very strong run defense, and again, it comes back to their front seven is very strong as a whole. Plus, on top of that, if they throw extra bodies into the box like a Kyle Hamilton, because now he's playing in that safety role with the slot healthy, and then also missing Marcus Williams, with him in that safety role rolling down into the box, is a real threat as a run defender, because he does a really good job in there as well as their linebackers who are very fast to key and scrape on the play their defensive line will handle multiple gaps which allows them to play pretty much clean on each play and they play extremely fast so they're going to get some negative plays in there as well the Roquan Smith the Patrick Queens but then it's about this defensive line it's about the size they have up front it's about their ability to handle multiple gaps to me that's what it comes back to the runs that I really liked when I was watching other teams first off was the ability to get wide against them offensively and this is where I think Jameer Gibbs could have a lot of success 
is the ability to get outside the tackle box, whether that's, you know, toss plays, stretches. But what I like about toss plays, especially if you utilize your offense line to block like a stretch instead of pulling on the play that the linebackers can key on, it allows them to still kind of have to fill their gap, but it also puts their defensive linemen in a spot where they're probably not their biggest strength is quickness laterally, so you're able to make them do that. On top of it, you can also attack these edge defenders. Now, they're getting them back, which is huge. Jadavian Clowney out there, and then also Owe. That's going to be very big time, because it's not like you're going at Kyle Van Noy, what they've had at that edge rusher position. It's going to be a little bit different, although I still like that matchup with how the, how the way our guys like Sam Laporta have blocked so far this season. I would look to try to get wide against this team with some of those tossed running plays, get outside the box a little bit, allow the linebackers to try to fill up field and I think that's a real opportunity for Jameer Gibbs to have success in this game. Also inside runs as well whether it's duos or inside zone plays uh, specifically the ability to double team some of their interior guys again they're going to handle multiple gaps up front so because of that you can have some success going right at them if you can block them up at the point of attack. The issue is a guy like Justin Matabike at the point of attack has been very difficult because he will drive back that first block really well. Then they have the rotation with Michael Pierce who's a big body that can really play multiple multiple gaps that also has Travis Jones that can rotate in for him. Those guys like Travis Jones, they can be hit and miss, I think, at handling double teams, just keep maintaining their ground and maintaining their gap. And to me, that's the biggest thing because trying to keep these linebackers free, you can have success there occasionally. Also, some split zone looks as well because you can set up those cut line, cutback lanes off it, specifically if they're playing a two deep shell. If they're playing two deep coverage, look at some of the split zone cutback opportunities that you could have against this team, get the linebackers to flow upfield, and then hit some of those backside block specifically with a split zone look where your tight end can come around and then get up to the second level we've seen the Lions do some variations of that as well since the season have been their most explosive when they played out of heavy personnel whether that be 12 or whether that be a 21 personnel look two tight ends or two backs which was usually when Jason Cabinda was here more so than they have been out of 11 personnel which is one tight end one back now they've been efficient specifically against the blitz they've been able to stay on top of schedule but they've had their explosive plays when they put heavy personnel on the field because they've been able to force defenses to match that so so the question becomes, does Baltimore feel like they have to match this personnel personnel? If we put two tight ends, do they need to put an extra linebacker on the field to stop that? That'll be a real key because if that's the case, as we always talk about limiting them in coverage, outside the numbers could open up for sure in this game. I'm really curious to see if they feel like they have to match us personnel wise in this game or if they try to stick kind of to their five defensive backs and stop the run that way. Because if that's the case, the Lions have to be able to run the ball. If we're going 12 personnel and they're going five defensive backs, the Lions have to be able to find success rushing the football. I think outside should be a real opportunity to look there but again if you're going between the tackles which is a real option it'll probably be with a Craig Reynolds or an Ibrahim and occasionally it will be with a guy like Jameer Gibbs but it'll come down to those double team blocks in the interior and a guy like Frank Ragnow or KO'd being able to handle those responsibilities in the inside because you know their linebackers are usually going to be where they're supposed to be. Tying some jet fakes along with that as well as occasionally handing that off may not be the worst option in the world is to try to show that and not just show it as eye candy but give it one or two times in the this game to a jet motion fake just to get the linebackers to respect it. If you think back to week one against Kansas City when Jameer Gibbs would line up at the slot, which I could really see in this game, especially with some of the blitzes they can throw, and if the Lions are going to try to stand in and pass protect, I could see that also trying to make these linebackers work and still attack the middle of the field. But these jet looks from like a slot alignment, or in this case like a tight end alignment from Gibbs with a guy like Craig in the backfield, could be something the Lions try to utilize. In terms of coverage, statistically speaking, they're one of the best in the league. Second in terms of passer rating allowed at 74, four touchdowns, five interceptions, and just over a 60% completion percentage and they're also one of the heavier man teams in the league they play over 30 percent of the time man coverage that may not sound a lot but it's actually the sixth most in the nfl right now in terms of man coverage rates so they do play a lot more man than anybody else and a big part of that this week is if if they do that keep an eye on the matchup of course between kyle hamilton and also sam laporta him getting back and healthy okay that's gonna be a huge matchup specifically because of his length and we know with laporta over 50 percent of his routes this season have been in breaking routes over the middle of the field so if that's a matchup the lions try to go to in man coverage I would expect then that he's going to see a lot of Kyle Hamilton Thermale I think that's how you say his name the slot cornerback he is someone that's been pretty good this season but I do think and he's also a former UDFA back with the New Orleans Saints but I do think St. Brown has an opportunity there however the Lions have thrown the least amount of outside the numbers passes percentage wise but have had tons of explosiveness when doing so this again feels like one of those weeks not where the Lions are going to try to live there because that's just not who they are but it feels like one of those weeks where we could see another big play on the outside specifically Marlon Humphrey 
McCaffrey, even though he's kind of now just getting back, he didn't look great. I circle a guy like Jamison Williams if he can get that matchup one on one in this game for him to try to get a shot play over top, especially because defensively they'll give you a lot of different looks. But one big thing is they like to keep their linebackers between the box and zone coverage. They'll also play zero coverage. Not a ton of teams do that, but they will play cover zero specifically on third down. So you'll occasionally get straight up one on ones on the outside, even within their zones, cover three, cover four. You're still getting a lot of one on one opportunities on the outside. I would look for a potential back shoulder completion in this game. I know that's very specific, but we saw us try it week one, didn't hit it against Kansas City to Marvin Jones. Don't be shocked this week if the Lions hit one of those. Josh Reynolds has been very good against man coverage so far this season. So if they try to lean into that, which would make sense, it would challenge us because in the past that hasn't been our strong suit is beating man coverage. Now we feel like we have more of those man beaters. The positive is those three man beaters, the key three man beaters are all healthy and here to play. St. Brown, Sam Laporta, and now getting Jameer Gibbs back. Those guys are back and healthy. So keep an eye on some potential crossing routes. Red Lions try to level it up. Running back, tight end, slot receiver. Some of those crossing routes force these linebackers to pass off routes underneath and not chase because if they chase, we should be able to just run away from them. They usually pass things off underneath. So look for the Lions to try to set some of those up. Running backs in the flat have been very effective against this defense. Again, they usually don't pull their linebackers too far out of the box. Two different situations, but two similar looks. Here in zone coverage, goal line, you're going to see again, they're going to run this little sit-down route, and the flat was open, though he goes to the middle of the field and it's broken up by Hamilton. Or this look here where they man up on a third down, because on third, they love to play cover zero, cover one, rat, those kind of looks. Here they man up, so they create a stack, and then a rub route, basically, into the flat. Even though it's not what we necessarily lean into, it is something that could be there for the Lions to attack this week. It won't be all game. It's not how we play offensively, but it is an opportunity occasionally to get those hits. Arlen Humphrey on Jameis Williams to potentially get one of those shot plays. And then also, again, Josh Reynolds against a guy, assuming that this would be a matchup that they put as Stevens one-on-one -on -one because he's been so good against man coverage so far this season. I like that matchup as well. He was actually the guy that I circled, even though he's only allowing like a 78 pass rating, as someone that I would look to attack in coverage. So I think the Lions have opportunities to win there really across the board I don't think their cornerbacks are elite and I think when you look at this game as much as this is about the trenches it does feel like in run support but also coverage it comes back to winning on the perimeter well, RDB's beating their receivers and then on the flip side our receivers beating their cornerbacks it feels like the ability to win on the perimeter would be key in this game but the thing is they have a guy on Kyle Hamilton it's probably going to see a lot of Sam Laporta so those are that's one of our man beaters that they're going to try to take out of the game so now it comes back to St. Brown but the thing is if St. Brown is trying to be taken out of the game with the safety that leaves one one-on-one -on -one opportunities for St. Brown against their slot. I love that matchup all day, as well as Jameer Gibbs getting involved again this week in the passing game. It would make a ton of sense, especially if they're trying to pry open the middle of the field to utilize speed, putting him in the slot. A fair share of zone coverage as well. Cover three, cover four. Those are two zone coverage. I see them run a lot. Cover six feels like it can be a little bit predictable. Obviously, against three by one looks, you'll get that look. Even against two by two with a running back on that side, you'll get cover three, cover six. I think they can be a little bit predictable when showing when cover six is going to happen in terms of giving that look pre-snap. So I would keep an eye on the Lions trying to attack some of those looks when they get a cover six and they know they have it. Again, some of the flats underneath on the cover two side, pulling their corners up vertically or trying to get something underneath on the cover four side where both of their players are playing deep and they only have one underneath player overloading a side of the field, maybe utilizing motion, not being as stagnant against this offense. I do think you can attack them. This isn't a super blitz heavy team, but they will bring pressure and the biggest thing is where they bring it from, from that slot position or Kyle Hamilton. They'll bring it from defensive backs their ability to rush from those spots is what makes it very tricky okay it's not always just straightforward as we're bringing our linebackers it's the fact that they bring it from those type of positions but well, they don't do it a ton but it's difficult to pick up on the play and read where to go with the football and a lot of times you'll get unblocked players so even if you have a running back in there they may not even see it coming so they got to be on high alert for this look for some hard count potentially to try to give away some of those tells they are 13th in pass rush win rate and a guy like Jadavian Clowney is a huge part of that I think their best pass rushers are clearly on the edges so Penny Sewell and Taylor Decker against Clowney and against uh, Owe, their best pass rushers are going to get that matchup a ton. Now, they're probably going to try to crash inside stunt. They love to overload a side of the field on third down. So again, you always get run potential there. But you have to look at that left side of the offensive line specifically. You don't want to get into third and long because of that reason against this team because they can show so many looks. And underneath coverage is actually pretty darn good. Their linebackers can really flow. I think Campbell said it best that they're going to adjust probably their game plan as the game goes on. Basically, have to feel out how Baltimore is going to defend them. They're 
there. You get a cover six look, bracketing in the receivers of Pittsburgh on the outside. Then you see Indy, a lot of single high. Here they drop out into a Tampa two. You hit the hot read. Here they man up across the board, almost saying like, okay, they're not receivers. They're not going to consistently beat us one-on-one. -on -one. So they adapt, play different style versus everybody. Against Pittsburgh, a lot of two high looks. For us, I would expect that they come in and say we have to take away the middle of the field, specifically maybe even man heavy, trying to see if we have beaters. And if we have success there, maybe dropping into more zone where they could fo focus on taking away the middle of the field, leaving one-on-ones outside the numbers, which is why I'm predicting that Jameer Gibbs has a huge receiving day for the Lions into this one. I think we get the linebackers into the mix, but it could also be the option outside of what they want to take away is letting Jameer Gibbs run wild underneath. We saw last time we played them with Swift. So because it feels like it's a little bit of a wait and see for the Lions offensively, it feels a little bit difficult to project who's going to have the big game, but I'm just assuming that they're going to try to take away certain things. Middle field, Amon Ross St. Brown's probably going to get bracketed in, and also Sam Laporte is probably going to see a lot of Kyle Hamilton, which could allow them to play man coverage. What that would do, of course, single up the outside receivers, give us one-on-ones on the outside, and that is a matchup that I'm having to focus on for this game on both sides of the ball. Can our cornerbacks hold up against their receivers? I think we win that battle on paper if Jerry Jacobs plays, so I like that battle as well. Specifically, having Brian Branch back is huge, but I think you can throw the safety into that mix. The reason why is because if Brian Branch is dealing with the slot and they're going to align Mark Andrews everywhere, he'll get him at times, and I think he can handle that matchup, but he's going to align a lot of different spots, so they're going to try to get everybody into the action. So unless the Lions are just following in man cover, he's going to see a lot of different matchups. So when he's in that in line or the you know third receiver in, linebacker to safety with safeties from time to time. So do the Lions potentially look at an iffy to get an extra defensive back on the field? Could that be a real possibility? Lions say, hey, we want iffy in that matchup if he's going to have to man up this guy because they're trying to find that matchup offensively. Could that be an option? I wouldn't expect it, but Kirby Joseph, Tracy Walker will likely see that. So those are matchups that I'm really looking forward to. Also, as I said, I think Jameer Gibbs is in line for a big receiving game. We saw last time we played the Baltimore Ravens, I think it could line up for that to happen again this week. I think there's only so many things that you can completely focus on. Their linebackers can really run, so they may leave some one-on-one -on -one opportunities there. And then if they do lean into more of the zone coverage, we've been great against zone, so I kind of anticipate we're going to find windows that we can attack. But with the speed at the linebacker position, the Lions are going to want to create movement and at the same time utilize multiple options. I think Jameer Gibbs throws himself into that. He can take some easy receptions, push the ball, especially if we can hit some things outside the numbers, pull some corners back. I think Jameer Gibbs is in line for a really big game. So that's the other matchup that I'm really looking forward to, specifically re receiving the football. I know it's his first game back, but I think there's a reason they want to give a big load to Jameer because he's in line to have a big game just in general here. So of course, that's a focus for me as well. And then finally, it'd be our tackles against their edge defenders because those are their two best pass rushers now back on the field together against two of our, you know, big time guys, our big time players, Penny Sewell and Taylor Decker. That matchup, we're going to see it often. Now they're going to move around pieces. They'll probably bring some blitz from the linebacker spot, from the slot position. But when it's one on one, who wins that matchup? And then also, do the tight ends give us enough movement so that we can run towards the edges against those guys? I'm also going to be looking at are they willing to match our personnel offensively? Are they going to match that defensively? Are they going to try to stay with an extra defensive back? Can the Lions get the stops with a little bit of a lighter run box? We saw a team like the Titans show light run boxes, and actually Tennessee had a pretty good amount of success getting them off the field at times when they would show light boxes. So can the Lions win with light boxes defensively, depending on the situation? Can they win up front with that, which comes back right back to those defensive linemen across the board being able to handle business because it's always about stopping Lamar Jackson to be slowing him down the best he can in the run game and also everything off schedule and everything that goes along with that. To me, this is going to be a tricky one because I think a lot of things they do well makes it difficult, specifically defensively. I think we're going to have a real challenge uh, offensively trying to open some things up. We'll have to be creative to try to open up the middle of the field a little bit more in this game. I think that's going to be the biggest challenge. Defensively, I think we've been prepared for this, and I also think we've, we've done a lot of looks that are going to be successful against this team. I think we can find success. It's just kind of like, okay, what do we actually want to do? And I think we can win that battle. I think we're more prepped uh, personnel-wise to handle that than last time, where we had Bobby Price on the outside and different pieces like that. I think we're more prepped to handle them this time around. So I actually like that matchup a little bit more than maybe what I love on offense. So I'm going a little bit low scoring here on the road. 21-20, I got the Lions winning this with the Justin Tucker missed field goal to end it. That's right. Justin Tucker misses the field goal. Lions go to 6-1. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.